What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Slackers, bringing you guys our next matchup in the Everyone Is Here tournament. So if you haven't seen it, it's a simple concept. 100 video game characters are put into a tournament, and then each day on the channel, I upload one of the matches. How do the matches work? Well, basically, I'll talk about the two characters in the match. Uh, maybe go over a couple facts about them. Maybe go over a mini moveset pool for how they could potentially work. And then we just vote for them down in the comments. It's simple thing. So, uh, yeah, voting is a part of the overall rules for the tournament. There's not that many. They're straightforward. So, let me just show you guys all the rules on screen right about now. And like I just said, they're pretty much straightforward. So, rule one, this is for fun. And, yeah... This is for fun. Just keep that in mind. You, all, you can always, always, always vote for who you want in the matchup. Just because a character might be an assist trophy or a spirit or a me costume or a character that's been quote unquote disconfirmed, it does not matter. You vote for who you want. That's why this tournament is for fun. All right. But uh, do remember, you only get one vote per person. How do you vote? Simple. Down in the comments, type the name of the character that you are voting for. If you happen to like both characters that are in the matchup, or if you just have a difficult time deciding who to vote for, simply type the word both. You can vote for both. It's totally fine. Always been a rule. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the rest of the rules, though, it's a double elimination tournament, meaning any character will have to lose two times overall before being eliminated from the tournament. And then uh, once we get to the results to determine the winner and loser of each individual matchup, if there happens to be a tie in the voting, well, we're just going to flip a coin on camera. It's the fairest way to break it. Uh, break any tie. So, uh, yeah, that's how we do that. And then uh, voting-wise for each matchup, basically, once an episode gets uploaded, you have seven days to get your votes in because voting only stays open for one week for each individual match. So if your vote comes in after that, it just doesn't count. All right, simple. All right, that's all for the rules. Now on to the meaty part of the video. All right, so let's get to the results from last week, which was a winner's bracket matchup. So whoever loses... Still in the tournament. It's okay. So, uh, the matchup last week. I forgot. Oh! <laughs> Sandbag. Yes, the joke. Kind of. No, he would be a kind of a joke character, right? But Sandbag, who is taking on Spyro the Dragon. And I can... You, you can pretty much guess how this one went, right? Spyro the Dragon ended up winning this matchup. TV. Uh, but Spyro won this one. 45 votes to just 22 for Sandbag. So, congrats to Spyro. Moves one step further into the tournament. What is my TV doing? I don't know. What the hell? Gotta bump the controller or something. But uh, yeah, Spyro moves on. Congrats to Spyro. Again, Sandbag loses, just drops to the loser bracket. So uh, yeah, Sandbag's still alive. So uh, let's get to the rest of the actual matchup for the video. Um, who is it? Hold up, hold up. Haha, <laughs> fixed it. All right, so uh, the matchup for today, in uh, interesting one. So. It is a first party character, Medusa, from the Kid Icarus series, one of the more uh, reoccurring villains. <laughs> villains! Uh, but uh, Medusa's opponent, Ryu, Ryu Hayabusa from the Ninja Gaiden series. Let's start. Who, who's first? Medusa, right? M, M comes before R. So, alphabetical order. Uh, Medusa! Like I said, first party character. Now, I think that's uh, that's going to be a big thing for Fighter Pass 2. I think most of us will probably expect at least one. At least one. Myself, I think I think we could get upward. I think we could get two first party characters. If we only get one, I wouldn't be surprised. If we get none, maybe I'd be a little surprised. But I think two first party characters in the Fighter Pass Volume 2 at most. So, could Medusa end up filling that role? Potentially. Uh, again... First party, so the whole business side of things. Nintendo likes to make money because they're a business. Smash Bros. prints money. So having a first party character saves them money for negotiating, going to get rights for a third party character, and all that sort of stuff. They just have it, and they're like, all right, let's put it in. Plus, it's a character from a franchise that Sakurai has personally worked on. You know, Kid Icarus Uprising on the DS, or 3DS, right? on the DS. Could you imagine anybody that played Kid Icarus Uprising, could you imagine trying to play that on the DS? That'd be that'd be weird. The controls were weird on that too. Remember they sold that like weird attachment to like for like a better grip because it was so crampy the style and the control. Enough about Kid Icarus Uprising for a second. How about we'll go back to Medusa. So cool thing that I always like about her. Villain. Yes. You guys know me by now. At this point I want to see a villain. I want to see a villain in the DLC portion of Smash Ultimate. Didn't get one for Fighter Pass 1. 
All right, we have six more chances to at least get a villain. Medusa, I would be okay with. Cool, let me see a villain. How many villains do we have? I always said Bowser, what, K. Rule, uh, Ganondorf. I guess you could say Piranha Plant because he's a he's an enemy, but he, does he count as a villain? I, I don't know. Bowser Jr. to an extent. I mean, like, Wolf doesn't count because he's like a grayish, anti-hero-ish sort of character. Mewtwo's not a villain. I mean... We need villains on the roster. We need to kind of balance. I'm not. I'm not saying Nintendo needs to focus on the hero versus villains aspect that uh, we kind of came up with. They don't need to do that. No, I'm just saying overall in general. Can I have another villain, please? Please. I'm not saying balance it out and give me like 60 more villains and then we'll be like, all right, cool. Now we have an even number of heroes and villains. No, 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 no. Just can I at least see one more villain? That's that's on my personal wish. Personal wish list. Villain. So, Medusa, she checks that off. Plus, we still didn't get that solo female fighter. No, Byleth does not count as a solo female fighter because Byleth is both male and female. So, no, it doesn't count, even though Byleth was still a female. I'm just specifically solo female. All right, Medusa fits that. So, let's go moveset here. Uh, got a few things. Um, a very, very fair comparison is Medusa with Palutena. And, I mean, I guess you could say... Height-wise, maybe running animation, uh, that sort of stuff. Gonna that'd probably be the building block, uh, and that's what uh, they kind of do with DLC characters. They will take a character that's already on the roster and start kind of just take that as like the base idea, and then kind of build off of that and go down their own path for whatever it is, move set, appear, you know, all that sort of stuff. So Medusa would share probably maybe a couple similarities to Medusa, maybe even move set wise, but uh, up special warp, it's like a, I think it's like a, a, I forget the actual name of it, but it's, it'd be very similar to uh, Palutena's warp. Um, uh, one thing I, I would like, maybe, I don't know if you could use it as a neutral special or maybe a down special. We all know the story of Medusa, right? You know, don't look into her eyes because you, you'll end up getting turned to stone. If you don't have that in her moveset, you're not doing the character properly. So, as I this is very this is the easiest comparison I can make. Mewtwo's down special. You know where he, I forget what's Mewtwo's down special. What's the, what? I always forget the name of moves. I know what they do, but I just don't. I don't. I never bothered to learn the name of the moves for Smash Bros. That's weird. But um, it's the same thing. Down special. How Mewtwo kind of stuns you for a couple seconds. That's exactly what Medusa would do in this case. Would turn you to stone. It's essentially kind of you're getting stunned for just a couple seconds. You'll break out of it, but you know it gives you a chance. And of course, it's going to be a close range. It's not going to. It's not going to be like half the distance of Final Destination. It's not going to be half the distance of Battlefield or anything like that. It's going to be pretty much the same range as Mewtwo. I don't know. Maybe you want to make it a slightly bit longer of a range. Maybe even shorter. I don't know. It's something like that. But. Uh, palatina has got her little weapon. She, what else is on here? Kiss of Oblivion. I mean, like, the pet, yeah, petrifying eye. There you go. Turn them to stone. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I think there's some good potential here. Again, building block is kind of there. Uh, first party co uh, character, maybe even in uh, Sakurai. I, like, again, he did state, and he wanted to make sure that we knew this. Nintendo picked the DLC. But I'm sure Sakurai probably had at least some sort of say or maybe sway towards maybe one character or another maybe he did i don't know that's just kind of me guessing i'm not saying that's how it happened no i'm not i'm not coming up with no theory here i'm just saying that could be a possibility so maybe it would be a character that he worked on medusa kid icarus i don't know but uh let's talk about another character that's been well talked about quite a bit re i call him ryu hayabusa not ryu i call him ryu hayabusa or you can call him hayabusa which again fun fact some people still bring up the argument almost every time I talk about Hayabusa. Well, you can't have two Ryus on the roster because it's going to get confusing. Well, yeah, but then you have Roy Roy from Fire Emblem and then you have Roy the Koopaling. They're, but even though he's an alternate skin, basically the character select screen. Would it say Ryu and Ryu as in, you know, Ninja Gaiden Ryu and then Street Fighter Ryu? Nah, just take what they do in Dead or Alive series. It's the simplest way to avoid any confusion. In Dead or Alive, the fighting game, by the way, fighting game, you already got a move set if you want to use that as some sort of inspiration. But you just take what the announcer calls him, Hayabusa. Just call him Hayabusa. Simple. It works. No confusion, all right? So Ninja Gaiden, one of the, if not, I guess the last remaining kind of 
iconic franchise from the SNES, the Super Nintendo, maybe even the Nintendo era of games. Uh, so I want to talk about that rumor that was going around. Actually, I don't even think it was a rumor. It was just another fan theory. Anybody hear about um, like when the Byleth backlash, when all that was happening? A lot of people were starting to say, all right, Byleth was planned for Fighter Pass 2. But they never presented any evidence. It was a bunch of guesses. And they're like, nah, Byleth would never happen. Sakurai played a very early version of Fire Emblem. He played a very early version of a lot of games to get said character to work with their most recent updated look. So, like, Breath of the Wild. He mentioned that as well. So, like, pushing... So, uh, the point was, for that, the, the fan theory that was going around, they pushed Hayabusa back to Fighter Pass 2 and bumped uh, Byleth up to Fighter Pass 1. Uh, no way, I don't buy that whatsoever. Stop trying to sell me on that. So, uh, the, the the whole idea was he got pushed back because negotiations were leaked, right? And I found that the stupidest thing that was, like, like really? They pushed back well over a year the development of a character that they would have had decided in, like, E3 2018. Again, the DLC was for Fighter Pass 1 was decided roughly around E3 of 2018. We're coming that's that's about a year and a half ago. They decided for first Fighter Pass, which is now wrapped up. So you're going to tell me that originally they had Hayabusa penciled in as one of the slots. But somehow the negotiations potentially leaked for the character. So they're like, "No, no, no, no. We're going to push him back and we're going to make a second Fighter Pass now." Yeah, come on. That's a bunch of BS. No, if, if anybody believes that, like, come on. Come on. Come on. You're going to push that back? And then, plus, do the fact that Hero, or at the time, Erdrick from Dragon Quest, was the most heavily speculated character because of leakers going around saying that Erdrick's going to happen. Erdrick, Erdrick, Erdrick. Which wasn't Erdrick, by the way. It ended up being Heroes from Fighter... Uh, not Fire Emblem. Oh, I got Fire Emblem on the brain. No, but um, Hero from Dragon Quest. So, in a way, they were right, but they weren't right. Again, leakers kind of all over the place. They tell you one thing, but they mean something else. So, with the whole Dragon Quest thing getting leaked... And they, uh, Dragon Quest the Hero ended up coming out as a second character. Why didn't that get pushed back, huh? But no, Ryu Hayabusa somehow gets pushed back. That was the lamest fan. Not the lamest. That was, that was a really bad fan theory that I've heard. But um, I realized I didn't really talk about the character at all. Uh, icon from the SNES, Super Nintendo, the NES sort of era of games. He's been around for decades. Move said he's a ninja. He's got a sword, so kind of another sword-ish kind of fighter. Sword is going to be in the move set very well. Uh, Shurikens, he's got that. Uh, he's got... He'd be kind of a faster character, again, take inspiration if anyone's played the Dead or Alive series. He's been a mainstay in that for, like, how long now? I don't know. Long time. But, like, the character-wise, he's got a recognizable name. I think you... I personally think he'd be a very fun character, play style-wise. Another ninja kind of on the roster, which would be kind of dope, so... I don't know. Sheik against uh, Ryu Hayabusa and ninja styles. That'd be kind of a cool matchup to see, I suppose. Stop it. There we go. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for this one, easy. I've been a fan of Hayabusa for a long time. I want to see him on the roster. Even though Medusa's a villain, I mean, it puts me in a weird spot. I could explain that, but I'm not going to. That would go way too far. Never mind. My vote is for Hayabusa. My vote's Hayabusa. Let me know who you guys are voting for, Medusa, Hayabusa, or Medusa, Hayabusa. <laughs> Medusa, Hayabusa, or both. They're all fine options. So that is it for this one. Sneak peek for tomorrow. <sighs> tomorrow's a tomorrow's a rough match for me. My number one and my number three most wanted characters. But the vote is simple for me tomorrow. But the matchup, Crash Bandicoot, from Crash Bandicoot, is going to be taking on... Um, I think I have his hat right here. Yeah, there we go. I've been saving that. Uh -huh. Haven't worn this hat in a while. Taking on Waluigi. I can't wait. Gonna be a fun, awesome matchup tomorrow. And then the results for tomorrow. We'll figure out who won between the square boys. Was it Sephiroth or did Gino end up conquering that victory? We'll find out tomorrow. But that's it for this one today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.